John C. Yang joins me now from here in Washington. He's the president and executive director of Asian Americans Advancing Justice. Uh, John, clearly this is a problem. Have things gotten better or worse when it comes to these hateful attacks against Asian Americans? And, and I mean like in the last few months, since the start of 2023. Unfortunately, things are probably about the same in 2023 as what we have seen, whether it is in 2020 or in 2022. The reality is that we do have political tensions with the Chinese government, and that continues to have repercussions and a backlash against the Chinese American and Asian American community here. So unfortunately, we are probably going to be continuing to see this for the certainly for the next year or more. Well, how much did the Trump era, especially after the start of the pandemic, Trump and his supporters, how much did they play a factor into this hate and racism? Unfortunately, the Trump administration, that prior administration, clearly fed into it. Part of that is that they made it okay for people to make racist comments. They essentially sanctioned it. When the president refused to use the term COVID-19, purposely crossed that out, and used terms like the Chinese virus or with the Wuhan flu, that gave permission to a lot of white nationalists to use terminology to engage in this sort of racial demagoguery. There's the human toll, of course, the pain, the violence, even loss of life. But there's also, John, the emotional toll. I can tell you, I work with Asian Americans. At the height of the pandemic, many were afraid to go out. You're absolutely right. In polls that we have seen, probably about at least half of Asian Americans, and again, it's Asian Americans, not just Chinese Americans, that have faced these types of racial epithets and some version of anti-Asian hate. And so if you're talking to your neighbors, your friends that are Asian American, you need to check in with them because they are more likely than not to have suffered some of this and to bear that psychological burden that we have seen. And what about the economic impact? We saw in that report before we came to you, a lot of you know Asian American businesses were hurting by all this. That, that's exactly right. Frankly, that was an early warning signal for us back in January and February of 2020. We saw a dramatic spike or dramatic decrease in business in Asian American restaurants, Asian American supermarkets. And we know from the misinformation, disinformation at that time, that people were accusing these supermarkets and restaurants of being unhygienic and carrying the disease. So clearly that was the early warning signal that we were going to see anti-Asian hate. And it continues today. And that is something that we need to continue to raise awareness about and make sure people that understand that this is still real and this is not right. And I have to, of course, ask you about the Oscars. What a night it was for Asian Americans. Do you feel the tide is perhaps turning, at least in Hollywood and beyond for Asians who for so long said they did not get the recognition that they deserved? Well, this is a thing that is part of sometimes the contradiction of America is at the same time that we're seeing all of this anti-Asian hate, we are seeing more inclusion in movies. We are celebrating these victories at the Oscars. So that certainly does give me hope and give me optimism that Asian Americans will be included in our American narrative, but also shows how much work we still need to do. Well, America is a melting pot, and I think... Uh, Asian Americans make America better all around. Thank you, John Yang. Thank you so much.